question. Thanks, Liz. All right, so as I stated earlier, we are counseling health and wellness services area. And um, you can read that. It just essentially says that we are here for you. So nice to meet you too, Abigail. We are here for you to provide and encourage, um, support everything related to counseling, health and wellness. We are um, emphasizing um, personal and community involvement and as reflected in our departmental mis mission. We all have separate missions, but as we work towards those separate goals, we're also under one mission. We sit under the Enrollment and Student Services Division under the direction of Vice President Melinda Husky. And so um, what we'll be sharing with you is that, you know, all institutions are structured differently and our enrollment and student services are under one umbrella. So if you think about student affairs and enrollment management, we come under that one umbrella under the student services division. All right, next slide. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna right. start out today talking about the Counseling Center. And we are located in our main administrative building, Old Main on campus. So we're all been working remotely this quarter and through the summer. So um, we have an awesome staff of psychologists, professional counselors, social workers, and a very enthusiastic and talented group of interns that come in every year that are um, in doctoral programs in clinical psychology. Um, and the um, mission of the Counseling Center is basically to facilitate student success and psychological well-being through culturally sensitive clinical services, outreach, and consultation. And one of the exciting things about working in a university counseling center is that we can support your wellness in a lot of different ways. Um, when you hear counseling center, you might just picture individual counseling, but we have a lot of services available to students. So when we kind of think about what the counseling center offers, um, we provide individual counseling and we often will say that the individual counseling follows a brief counseling model, which means um, usually we're working with students on um, specific goals, maybe things they wanna change in their lives, like get some coping skills to manage some anxiety or particular issues that they're wanting to explore as well. Some of the students coming in have um, mental health health issues that they're dealing with. Other students that come in are just kind of dealing with life and looking for some support um, just with whatever's going on for you um, as a university student going through a lot of different transitions while you're here. Um, one of the positive things about the Counseling Center and one of our strengths is that when you first are trying to find out about our services, um, it's very quick to be able to contact us. Usually um, the same day you call or when we're open, um, when you drop in, um, you'll be able to talk to a counselor right then. Just have a little consultation about what's going on for you and talk about next steps and what might be helpful. We do offer, as you would think, some individual counseling, but um, I also want to say we have a very, very strong groups program. And part of the reason that we've put a lot of effort into developing that program is that we've found that for a number of issues, um, actually group counseling is um, the strongest kind of treatment that you can utilize for the issue you're working on. Um, we also offer psychoeducational workshops, um, we have workshops on self-care skills, mindfulness, communication and relationships, managing emotions, test anxiety, distress tolerance, so a lot of different options there. And um, we also can help students out that are looking for something maybe more in depth in terms of counseling and might want to look at off-campus um, resources. And that's that's in a situation where you maybe have some more complex mental health issues you're dealing with, or um, you're really wanting one-on-one -on -one counseling every week while you're at Western. We can offer weekly support, but generally it's gonna be a combination of individual counseling and groups. 
And then um, I would like to say too that we do offer um, crisis services at the counseling center too, and that's available 24 mm seven. -hmm. So even on the evenings and weekends, <clears throat> if something's going on and you need to um, call and talk to a counselor about um, a concern about yourself or maybe a concern about your friend, um, we're here. And this is, this is just an um, extra slide on our crisis support. As I said, um, it's really easy to access after hours support. You just call our main line and press one and you will talk to an after hours counselor. Here's a listing of some of our um, other groups and workshops, Understanding Self and Others. That's um, a group where you learn about yourself and how you connect with other people. Um, one of our most popular groups. We've also had first gen groups, a group on building self-confidence, disordered eating support group, LGBTQ plus support, grief group, mindfulness, and um, other groups um, we, such as um, coordinating with sexual assault support services um, to provide groups are also available throughout the year. We are working right now on figuring out how to offer groups um, all of our groups online. So um, we'll be kind of looking at fall and seeing what we're able to plan there. Um, outreach is another activity that we do in the Counseling Center. And when we talk about outreach, what we mean is when we get out of the office, um, figuratively right now online, but we get out of the office and we find ways to connect with students. And this includes our program called Wellness Wednesdays that explores a lot of different topics related to wellness. Um, we participate with our colleagues in prevention and wellness um, in presenting Mental Health Awareness Month. We have a mindful self-compassion workshop series and have also been offering queer yoga this year. Um, there are also some specific com community check-ins where counselors are available just to talk to students on, a, on just a casual basis, not a formal session. And we do that through the uh, Ethnic Student Center as well as the Veterans Center. Um, and these are just some um, events that we've had, past and present. And um, just as I'm going to turn it over to Elva over in prevention and wellness, uh, I know there were just a couple of questions that had come through too. So just to answer those um, very quickly, um, our, I think there were some questions about staffing that I answered, but I wanted to let you know that uh, there is no additional fee when you come in. Um, for counseling services. Our services are confidential. So the fact that you've come in and talked to one of us and whatever you talked about, those, those are kept confidential. There's just very rare exceptions to that. And it's like an emergency situation where, where there's a risk of harm to self or others or child abuse situation. So, um, you know, you can rest assured that our services are confidential. Um, and let's see, there's one more question. Um, yes, there, there was a question about informed consent. We do have some forms that you fill out when you're coming in for our regular counseling services. And part of that is an informed consent, which is kind of a contract between you and us, and which talks about that confidentiality and some of the resources available to you. So, um, I'm going to turn it over to Elva, Gidding, Elva Monroe over in Prevention and Wellness Services, and um, thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, Anne-Marie. And I'm going to give you some information about Prevention and Wellness Services. Um, can I have the next slide? Okay. Um, programs and services that we have to help um, support students in being successful at Western. That's one of our primary goals is we want you to be well and healthy the entire time you're involved at Western. 
um, learning a lot about yourself, about how to take care of your own well-being, and how health and well-being impacts both your personal success, but also your academic success. Uh, we want you to be very involved in that process, as well as not only your own process, but also the health and wellness of that community around you. We want you to be able to contribute to not just your friends, but our whole university community. And we love to have you involved in that community as well. Okay, can I have the next slide? In general, um, this is just kind of a over quick overview of our services. We do a lot of campus-wide health promotion and wellness programming. And I'll tell you a little bit more about details around that. We do a lot of um, general awareness information. We do uh, events that highlight various health and wellness issues. Uh, we work with a lot of groups across campus. Um, very much partnering with our uh, other uh, student counseling center and student health service, um, other uh, uh, offices within our group, but we have a very wide variety of allies and collaborators across the university and even in the community as well, um, helping us with the campus-wide health promotions and, and wellness programs. We offer specific programs that address alcohol and drug consultation and information. Um, we want students to be able to feel confident coming into those services, knowing that we're going to be respecting their confidentiality of whatever they disclose for us. What our goal is in our alcohol and drug services is that we support a student, that we listen, we hear the concerns, we help you try to figure out what's the best next steps forward for you to take and help you in that process. We also talk to a lot of students about their concerns about um, alcohol or drug use by friends or family or housemates as well. Um, so we want you to be able to have conversations that say, I care about what's happening with you. Can we talk about that? And to be able to have successful caring conversations with friends and family that you have concerns about. We also want you to feel confident in being able to feel supported through our services by whatever steps forward you take to deal with your own concerns about your own substance use. Um, we meet you where you are. We don't emphasize abstinence. Abstinence is always part of a continuum of choices, but those choices are up to the students that we're working with. Um, we help you look at the whole picture and make choices about what you want to have happen. And we talk about all the options so that you can confidently weigh those and choose which ones best fit where you are at the moment and where you'd like to be moving toward. Um, another one of our services is our sexual assault prevention and survivor support. Uh, that is a really critical service for us to be able to provide to Western that's available to all students, um, regardless of uh, sexual orientation, choices, anything of that nature. We want every student to feel welcomed when they come to our CASA services, uh, confident that we're going to be respecting their confidentiality that we're going to be sensitive to their issues. We want to be able to listen actively with them to sort out what's happened, what do you want, what do you need, and help you make those bridges in order to have the support that you need to be able to heal and move forward, as well as being able to support your continued success as a student. That's really critical for us. A lot of what we do is provide information about options and help you work through what options would you like to choose. Even the option of, I don't wanna choose anything right now. I wanna sit back, I wanna think about what's happened and what I might wanna do moving forward. 
and then come back to us at any time and we're always there to support you. We also work closely with our allies and other services in the community to make sure that students are aware that there are a lot of community resources out there to support them as well. Um, all of our, the staff that works as advocates for us are certified by the state. They are very well trained, very professional. Um, and we want students to be able to feel confident and safe coming in to work with our staff. We also provide sexual health information and education. Some of this involves um, being able to sit down and talk with a peer, or sometimes those conversations can be virtual. Um, like we've been doing recently, and being able to have that information available to students, whatever questions they may have about sexual health, sexual wellness, communication with partners, information about if I go in for a certain kind of um, health service, what's going to happen during that appointment? Um, what kind of questions do I want to consider asking my health provider? Uh, all of those kind of questions. What kind of options about perhaps birth control uh, do I want to ask about so that I make sure to get all the information I might need or want and feel confident asking those questions uh, rather than that feeling of I go into um, uh, perhaps a medical appointment and suddenly all my questions disappear and I'm feeling awkward and uncomfortable and I forget to ask everything that I really wanted to know. So we help you feel empowered to feel confident in those sessions and those experiences and to be able to ask the questions that you want to ask and um, confident that you can communicate well with all of the, the service providers that you might be working with. Okay, uh, next slide. Just a sort of an a overview of some of the events that we have been involved with. Um, our dry-ish January, um, that's often looking at the fact that a lot of people uh, make New Year's resolutions, and that's often a time when people are looking at their choices around substance use. And maybe what we're encouraging with dry-ish January is the, the perhaps let's take a break. Let's really step back, look at what we're doing. What do you want to be doing? And how do you want your life to be going with, with your substance use choices? So just taking a break for a while. And we want to be able to support you during that. And we, we try to make it a fun month as well, um, offering alternative activities, a lot of different suggestions for things to do with friends um, and on your own as well. We're involved in the Red Folder Project, which is a campus-wide initiative to help faculty and staff recognize and respond effectively and refer students that are in distress. Um, we have that designed specifically both in a hard copy actual Red Folder that we give to every uh, staff and faculty member on campus, but also the virtual Red Folder as well so that they can have it at their fingertips at any time during the year. Uh, we want them all to feel empowered to be able to help a student that may disclose a concern to them get to the right service for what the concern is and also how to feel empowered themselves to be able to effectively respond in a genuine and caring and compassionate manner to whatever is going on with the students that they're working with. Um, uh, Beat the Blues, our month of January, we're often looking at the fact that uh, January is often a dark and dreary, rainy month, and we want to help people get through that as well as possible, offering some tips on how to stay well, how to keep your um, emotions up, how to feel good, and things that you can do to help yourself feel well. Um, we often, as it says, we partner with the Counseling Center uh, on many, many of our events, and the Beat the Blues month of January is one of those major times. We also do a Mental Health Awareness Month in the, middle, in the month of May, also strongly uh, partnering in a lot of ways with the Counseling Center staff. They have fabulous folks that uh, we love working with in terms of all of our outreach and awareness events. 
And then uh, we do a lot of um, the Sexual Violence Awareness Month, the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We do alcohol and drug awareness um, weeks and months, um, kind of you name it. And we're gonna be looking at it through the year, kind of highlighting things that particularly connect with the student experience of being in college, what's happening to you, and what are your major concern focus areas throughout the year. Okay, can I have the next slide? We also have a very robust peer health educator program that we are incredibly proud of. We have fabulous students that work with us on a volunteer basis. Um, it's a wonderful experience for those students. They talk a lot to us about um, how it helps them both personally in terms of feeling like they've got a better awareness and handle on what they want and need to do around their own wellness and, the, and also influencing the wellness of their community. Um, our peer health educators are very dedicated to helping create the, the best community health and wellness at Western that we possibly can. And part of that is being there for their peers uh, and providing the services and programming that reach out and really touch the student experience that, that they know intimately. It has a fairly intensive training process. We, all of our peer health educators are extremely well trained. They specialize in alcohol or drug issues, um, sexual violence prevention, our sexual health information, and also an area that we call Thrive, which is really looking at how do we support well-being and wellness? And how do we help a student look at what they need to be as well um, and support their own well-being and self-confidence and their own health and just general emotional wellness? Um, we also work a lot with our peer health educators on providing training for other students, um, doing educational outreach programs and that general uh, support to their peers. Okay, next slide. All right, transition to David at the, the Student Health Center and thank you. Welcome again, everybody. Um, can we have the next slide, please? So the first thing I wanted to let folks know was that the Student Health Center is kind of like your family practice clinic at home. We are staffed by board certified family physicians and nurse practitioners, and we can provide pretty much all the services that you would have um, experienced at your previous doctor's office. And so um, it's like a one-stop shop for your medical services um, on campus. The only difference for us, and the reason we have this slide, is because we're way over at the other end of campus. Um, our colleagues at the Counseling Center and the folks at the Prevention Wellness Center are located in Old Main, which is kind of this building, I can't point, but um, way on the left side. And um, our offices and clinic are circled in red. It's in the Campus Services Building. Um, so if any of you are um, going to be at the south end of campus, that's where we'll be. Um, there's easy access um, by bus, we have parking, um, and it's actually not a far walk. If you're in the middle of campus, it's probably about a 15 minute walk. Next slide, please. Like I said, we're a full family practice clinic, and so we manage a lot of different kinds of things. Everything from acute illnesses and injury, folks who are coming in, um, skateboards, snowboarding accidents, something like that. Um, folks who have um, ongoing medical conditions. Maybe you already have a diagnosis of low thyroid or diabetes, um, things like that we can help manage. We also have a behavioral health and psychiatric service services that are available in conjunction with the counseling center. So. Um, we can handle a lot of mental health issues if you're on medications, for example, or you think you might need medications for some of your mental health issues, we can help. Um, we also have a lot of orthopedic care 
we take care of um, not only the athletes on campus, but all the students with regard to their orthopedic needs. Maybe you've twisted an ankle while you were walking across campus um, or had some kind of issue that um, just isn't getting better. Um, we can do that. And we also have an athletic trainer that can help you with rehab. We do minor surgical procedures. So if um, you've had that skateboarding accident and cut your arm, um, if you come in, we can stitch it up for you. Um, sometimes if we are looking at skin lesions and they look a little concerning for maybe something like a skin cancer, we can remove that and take care of that. Um, we can do um, IUD insertions and other kinds of um, procedural stuff that can be very supportive to whatever your needs are. Um, we have a large sexual health program. Um, we do provide travel services. So if you're at all interested as you're going through your studies to do travel abroad, we can help kind of get you organized for that. Um, we do have a blood draw center in the clinic. So if you need labs or if we need to get labs, we can do that. Um, we can also help with emergencies and we refer to um, a number of specialists in the community. Bellingham is big enough that we are lucky to have a fairly um, robust set of um, specialists in town. Um, so if we need to, we can send you to an orthopedic surgeon or we can send you to an endocrinologist or a rheumatologist. Um, some of the sub subspecialties um, we don't have. And so that sometimes means um, organizing folks to get to Seattle or somewhere else. And then we've been doing telehealth appointments since we started um, this whole COVID pandemic. And that's been working out really well. And students have found that to be a great service. Um, you don't even have to get out of bed to come to your doctor's office. So it's pretty nice. Uh, next slide, please. One of our primary roles is to really help students um, learn to take care of themselves. This is a transition for you guys. Um, maybe you've been able to take care of yourselves for a while. Maybe your parents have been helping navigate that, um, but now you're on your own and trying to figure out the healthcare system can be pretty overwhelming. And so our job is really to help you get through this we have a lot of over-the-counter medications for colds and sore throats and headaches and stuff. Um, we want you to be proactive and come in sooner than later. Remember that as a student, you have uh, one of the fees that you're paying is a health and wellness fee, which provides you with unlimited access to the health center and unlimited visits. And so come in sooner than later and we can help with the problems be before they get big. Um, we also try to help you navigate decision making when it comes to your health and what steps you're going to need to do. Um, we work on alcohol and marijuana and substance abuse screening and counseling and try to help you through those issues. Um, things like alcohol and marijuana can really affect thought processes it can affect your anxiety levels, it can disrupt sleep. And so sometimes folks are presenting with those issues and we find that that's really um, where, the, where the help is needed. And then we, like I said, try to help you understand this world of healthcare. It's complicated enough as it is, but we try to simplify it as much as possible. Next. One of the other things that we've worked really hard to do, especially in light of the COVID pandemic, is make both our staff and students um, as safe as possible. And in doing so, what we have done is created a whole separate clinic called the Student Health Center Annex, which is our place to see um, folks who have COVID-like symptoms. Um, it's um, adjacent to our building, so it's easy to get to. Um, and it is well designed um, for this kind of setting. Um, it's not a drop-in clinic and there are um, ways for us, usually what would happen is you would see a provider via telehealth and if they thought you needed a full evaluation, then we would go ahead and um, make arrangements for you to go into the annex. 
If it is a COVID-related question, um, we don't do testing in the respiratory clinic, but we are able to refer you to a drive-through clinic in the community so that we can get that result. Usually we can get it within 24 to 48 hours, get that response and figure out what to do next. So that's the respiratory clinic. Next. I saw one question, um, any health services that require a fee as a student or a copay? Great question. Um, so a lot of times, like I said, your visits at the health center are included in the health and wellness fee. But if we have to refer you for an x-ray, if we have to refer you for a referral to a specialist like an orthopedic surgeon, if we need to order labs, all of those um, are applied to the insurance that you would have. And so if you have parents insurance, that's exactly what we would be um, sending for. Um, we also take um, state insurance um, and refer folks for that. But again, the visits themselves are covered. So there's no need to pay when you're here, you just show up. All right, any other questions? What other questions do you have? This one is probably for you, Anne-Marie. Are there mental health clubs on campus? Yeah, um, you know, there's a number of student clubs on campus and we have had a group that um, represented NAMI on campus. And um, I would say, um, a number of the prevention and wellness groups are not necessarily a club, but um, they have opportunity for student um, participation, let's say. And um, so that's probably, you know, one of the best resources on campus. There's, there's a whole like passel of student clubs that are organized through associated students. And the cool thing about that is that's a student organization and any student can start a club. So for example, we've had people start a club um, for To Write Love on Her Arms and that was a student initiated club. So um, there's in a way opportunity for connection or for advocacy and you as an incoming student actually have some support with that through associated students. All right, thank you, Emery. You see this one, Elva is for you. How can we get involved and trained with the peer support program mentioned earlier? And you're on mute, Elva. You're on mute, Elva. Okay, now now I'm there. Um, yeah, I get very excited when students want to know how to how can I get involved. Um, every spring we do uh, a recruitment process. We like you to be able to get as a new student kind of settled in, but also to know that we have our our program. We also have kind of a, a shadow arrangement so that if you're coming in and you've been involved. Um, and you really are passionate about wanting to be involved right away, um, we can start connecting you with our current group and so that you can be a part of some of the events that we do, um, attending, also maybe helping work behind the scenes a bit so that you can feel like, okay, is this a program that I really wanna be involved with? And also feel like I'm making that connection already. Um, like I said, we do our big recruitment and uh, application process in the spring. We do selection at that time. Um, we do placement in of the folks that are selected for our program into the various uh, topic specialties that we have. And then we bring you back about a week prior to fall quarter. And that entire week is focused on the specific area 
of expertise that you're going to be trained with. So you don't have to worry about coming in already with knowledge. You can come in saying, I just want to know more about this area. I want to work in this area. Um, I, I really feel a calling to be better informed about this and to work with my peers on this. Um, so being able to come in, we help you learn and practice and feel confident in all the information that you would ever need to be um, a peer health educator with our program. So hopefully that, that kind of answers your question. I see a good question that I think I can help answer. Um, after hours health needs that can't wait. Great question. Um, <laughs> The Student Health Center is open only during the week. And so if you have uh, medical issues that occur after hours or during the weekends, there are a couple options. Um, right now we have the universe, we contract with the University of Washington Consulting Nurse Line and they are available 24 seven as needed. Um, there is a doctor on call if needed. Um, and then our website also lists quite a um, large group of um, urgent care centers. It has the information for the hospital and the emergency room and um, other issues like that. And then the last thing that you guys should know about is something called our patient portal. And through our electronic medical record called My Western Health, you can actually send a note directly to um, the healthcare team. And a lot of times, um, and that's being watched 24 seven. Well, to be honest with you, it's watched through the day and on the weekends. Um, and that's a great way to get access to a student health center doctor or a provider that can help answer a question on the weekend. So, those would be all the, the different options that you have um, for after hours. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know whether you want to talk in, at all, Anne Marie, about protocol. You, you did mention it, but it might bear repeating here. Yeah, um, just to just to repeat, if there's an after hours, more of a mental health issue. And that's for, we've had students use our after hours line that um, are having some thoughts about suicide or self harm, but also students who are having a panic attack at two in the morning and want somebody to talk that through with them. And um, that after hours um, support, it's on the evenings and on the weekends as you access that just by call, calling the counseling center main, main line and you just press one and it will connect you with our after hours counselor. What other questions do you have? Just remember that we are um, going to be your, I'm going to say full service um, providers of wellness. Um, and well students are thriving students. We know that students that come to campus typically don't leave because of academic reasons. They typically leave because of one of the reasons in one of these squares that you see. Um, related to health uh, or mental health um, or some other adjustment um, issues. And so um, just know that as you um, transition onto campus that the, the centers that we have, the services that we have are there to support you. Um, we know that you're coming from different environments, so there may be different levels of stigma related to the services that we provide. And we hope that um, when you come on campus, you feel um, welcome and can identify and find these services and find these communities and groups uh, to fit in. We also know that students that connect with groups um, tend to thrive and do better. So we encourage you as you are thinking about your, um, your beginnings at Western, as you come in this 
really kind of amorphous, tumultuous, kind of weird time in the universe. And you're still on this webinar. So we're excited about that. As you continue to push your way forward toward Western, we are here um, to support you and help you navigate this really confusing time. Um, if there are any students that are marginalized, whether you're queer or um, you know, native student or um, a black student, just know that we are dealing with and struggling through and coping with all of those issues right now, particularly in the black community. Um, your issues will not be ignored. We are working diligently to um, support all of our students, including those that are most, um, mostly marginalized. Mm -hmm. um, we are um, not tone deaf to the issues that are going on right now in the country. Um, and we are working to mobilize and shore up the supports that we have on campus to not just support the black students, but to also support the systems and to support the allies out there um, and just to, to, to be mindful that we're all human and we're all going through what the country is going through right now. And so I, I wanted to at least acknowledge that and let you know that we are right in there with you. We are thinking about those issues with you and we are not um, the keepers of all the answers, but we are, are doing our best to serve and to prepare for you so that you will have um, a great time, regardless of what this, the, the fall quarter brings, because we don't 100% know, but what we do know is that the services that we have will be here. And when it's time for us to transition back to campus, because we are pretty sure that this is not permanent, that we will all be back on campus one day. Um, but while we are navigating and working through this with faculty, with, with staff members, with students, that um, we're being patient with each other. Um, and so we are so glad that you took the time out to um, jump in on this webinar. You are truly special because it is Friday, wherever you are, in whatever time zone you are, it is still Friday. And so um, we are grateful that you took yeah. some time out on your Friday uh, to spend with us. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you have a couple more questions. We have about 11 minutes left if you have any questions at all that we can answer? We're happy to do that. One thing I might add, if I might, yeah. Cicelina, yeah. Yeah. is yeah. one good thing that you guys can do uh, before you get here is to make a little first aid kit. And if that little kit just has a thermometer in it, you get like major bonus points. Um, so I think that um, having a little kit, um, you know, there are some that are pre-made, but quite honestly, make your own. Um, you can pick up things like Band-Aids and, you know, antibacterial soap and um, sanitizer and some other things um, to make sure that you can take care of yourself. And that's a really good start as you transition um, to Western. So. Any other questions? All right. I think that we don't have any more questions because the team did such an amazing <laughs> job. I mean, I can't think of any other reason why um, Everything is crystal clear, right? That's right. Everything is crystal clear. Yeah. And just know that, you know, as, as we um, navigate this COVID crisis, we're doing everything that we can do to um, follow this, the guidelines, right? So they come from federal, then they go national, and then they come all the way down to the local county and school level. And we are, um, you know, conforming to the guidelines and we will be in alignment with them. So when you come on campus, um, we will be sure to, to, to you, you should be you know, made aware that we will, we will um, follow all of the rules and guidelines and reg regulations provided by our governor and then also supported by our team that's been working really hard to make sure that we keep you safe. Um, 
So just know that. All right, I think that they are ready to get their Friday on. One more um, shameless plug. Yes. We have and we'll be doing a major launch of uh, an online magazine that all students will have access to. It's called Campus Well. And mm. it's, it, it's done by some incredible uh, organizations nationally that um, make this available for us that we've contracted with because we mm. think it's a fabulous resource for information for students. And it's addressed to what's going on in, in student lives through each quarter of the year. What, what are the major things that students are having to deal with, the major things that you'll be encountering? And answering a myriad of questions that you may have about various health and wellness issues. Um, so we hope that you enjoy that and use it. Um, we want everyone to be able to, to be logging in and reading the articles and taking the self quizzes and enjoying being able to access that information. So we're very happy to be able to bring that to all of you. So campus you, well. Um, campus well. Yep, you could probably check it out because it's online. Many universities have it and it's absolutely a lot of fun. I mean, it talks about everything from anxiety during finals to sleep and eating right and exercising and how much water you should drink. I mean, it really does have us all kind of nailed down. When, when you're misbehaving, click on the campus well, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to, to get, in, get in shape. So I think that's it. I think we're gonna let you go on about your Friday. We thank you again for taking this time out to spend with us and you know, continue checking the, webs uh, the Western's uh, website and as we update information, you'll get updated information. And we're just excited uh, to see you all come here this fall. Have a fantastic weekend and be safe, everyone. Welcome to Western. Bye now. Welcome Thanks. to Western. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Anytime. Right, all right.